Tomorrow is uh, the largely the systems, the water, po uh, water, sewage, and power, all that are they're all interrelated. So that's why I talk about them all at the same time. Uh, today is the basic structure, which is totally integrated with the heating and cooling, and in fact uh, integrated with the systems as well. So I mean the a way to look at this is uh, these are machines. Uh, they're not, you know, they're, yeah, they're shelters, they're homes, they're houses, whatever you want to call them in, in terms of that, but they're machines and they're, they're, the look of them and the structure of them and everything about them is uh, a result of what it takes to encounter the natural phenomena on the planet that are going to provide what you need. In other words, if you're going to catch water, obviously you're not going to do a roof like this. You're going to do a roof like this. And uh, the, um, the same for the thermal, solar, electric, everything. So in that they're a machine, uh, an easy way for me to, to uh, explain it to myself is uh, it's much like the human body. Uh, the, the human body is a circulatory system, a, a nervous system, a digestive system, uh, a respiratory system. All of these systems are in the human body. You can't just uh, apply these systems to the human body. The look of the human body is really a result of these systems. Uh, and these buildings are pretty much that way. So. You, you know, you can't say, well, I want my respiratory system uh, on my leg or something like that, you know. <laughs> it's not going to work out. And it's almost that ridiculous. Uh, people, you know, people tell us uh, we really like this concept, and, uh, but we want uh, this here and that there. It's not that easy to do that. It's the machine and, and the, the understanding of the encounter with the natural phenomenon is what designs it. I don't really design this machine, I'm just finding it. I'm finding how it works. And I'm finding more, every, we've been doing this, I've been doing this for 40 years, I guess. Uh, and each year, it keeps evolving more. It's, we're just now scratching the surface of what is really possible in terms of encountering the natural phenomena. Uh, and that, so the relationship to, of these buildings to the human body is a good way to look at it because then it causes you to understand why you can't really have your particular design and then apply these things. Uh, so, so today we'll get into the structure which involves the heating and cooling. And the first, the component of, of heating and cooling uh, is thermal mass. And uh, a lot of people don't really even architects and engineers really don't realize what thermal mass is. Uh, and I, the way I look at it, and the, the book Comfort in Any Climate goes into it, but if you have a chunk of matter, uh, two chunks of matter, one is mass and one is insulation, and there's a big difference. In mass, it's dense. The molecules are all really tightly packed. That's what creates density. And because they're tightly packed, temperature can just move through it, passing from one to the next to the next to the next. So it's like, it's very dense. Uh, insulation is just the opposite. Insulation is a bunch of air spaces, really, uh, created in a lot of different ways by weird materials or natural materials. But what happens with insulation is, unlike mass that'll just let temperature pass right through it and, and if you trap it with insulation then it gets stored in it. Insulation stops it. You can't, the, the, the temperature, whether it's cold or hot, doesn't, uh, has, it has a hard time traveling very far. So insulation really blocks the movement of temperature and mass allows it to just go in like water going in a barrel, really. And so if this is a dense chunk of mass, temperature can go right into it. And so these buildings, like, so if you, if you take a dense chunk of mass then and insulate three sides of it and sub, uh, subject uh, 
one side of it to a temperature influx, be it cold or hot, uh, it's just going to go in here. It can't go out because of the insulation, so you're trapping it, very much like uh, water being caught in a barrel. Temperature is caught in mass. So that's, the, that's the, the building block of these buildings. And so uh, the ideal wall then would have mass and insulation. Uh, that's the difference between this and straw bale. Straw bale construction is a great uh, method of building because it's using a, using a renewable uh, product, but it's only insulation, so it doesn't store the temperature. And uh, an example of storing the temperature is like if you take a, a cast iron skillet or a, uh, and a tin pan, both, and put them on the stove at the same time. The heavy, dense cast iron skillet gets hot, the tin pan gets hot. You turn the stove off and really less than a minute later the tin pan is cooling down. Five, ten minutes later the iron skillet will still burn your hand. That's the example right there of, of uh, mass storing energy. And so that's the thing that we determined decades ago that you should build buildings out of. Now you couple that with the fact that, so we're looking for a, a massive way to build. Uh, early In the early days they were using, uh, water is a very dense mass, so they were using uh, drums filled with water. We actually did some water can houses, uh, adobe, stone, but we were at the same time responding to uh, the the garbage situation on the planet and we were building buildings out of beer cans before we even stumbled into this mass thing. The mass thing kind of came out from the physicists uh, in the early 70s when uh, we had the first uh, hint of an energy crisis and uh, people were all, all the engineers and scientists were trying to build mass into houses. We were already fooling around with building houses out of beer cans so we looked around at what else there was a lot of on this planet and it was tires and we started stuffing dirt into tires and then beating it into tires and so you have uh, a tire that is a steel belted rubber casing and you beat it full of earth you have a two and a half foot thick chunk of mass encased in steel belted rubber uh, the material that you're using is dirt which is everywhere. Tires are really everywhere. Tires are indigenous to the entire planet. If you came here from another planet and saw all the tire piles and the tires, you'd think they grew here just like trees. And <laughs> in fact, they do. I mean, we've been everywhere. Bolivia, India, everywhere we go, they've got tires, just like they have trees. So they actually have a problem with tires. You never hear anybody saying there are too many trees, but you do hear people saying there are too many tires and too many people probably. But uh, anyway, so tires are in indigenous to the entire planet. They are a great massive way to build. They're low tech. They don't require equipment. They require very little training. Uh, so when, you're, when, you, when we were trying to evolve a method of building a mass building, we stumbled onto this really and that was 30 years ago and we really haven't found anything better. In other words, if I found some better way to achieve a massive structure, I would use it immediately. But I haven't. Uh, so we, we uh, and, and when, you, when you put all these criteria together, you, it's really almost unbeatable. The fact that they're indigenous to the entire planet, that it's low tech, that it's getting rid of something that we have a problem with, that it is structurally super. I don't know if Kirsten showed you the cement truck loaded driving onto the tire wall last night. Uh, it's super structure and it's very good for earthquake because it's resilient and it's, like I say, it's mass. It's mass that stores temperature. So that's what we started in, in the old days, building these U's, very much like that, and out of tires and admitting the uh, sun from the south and we had, uh, that's what this building really is. 